Did you know there's a Bible verse that says, if you ignore this, you're not ignoring man, you're ignoring God. So make sure that we pay attention to this video because I don't want to ignore God. And I believe that you don't want to ignore God. So let's read the Bible verse in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, where there's some Christian leaders speaking to some believers and they're telling them, hey, God told us to tell you this. This is what the scripture says. We're not making this up. And if you ignore us, you're not ignoring us. You're ignoring God. So let's find out what we must pay attention to so that we won't ignore the Lord. But before we read that Bible verse that says, if you ignore this, you're ignoring God. I want to read you something from the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 through 4, because the Bible tells us how it's going to be in the last days. The Bible says in the last days, people aren't going to want to hear the healthy words, the sound doctrine that comes from God. But they're going to have itching ears and they're going to raise up preachers that are going to preach to them what they want to hear. Let me ask you a question. Are you just chasing what you want to hear? Are you just seeking what's pleasing to your ear? Do you have an itching ear? Because believe me, there's a lot of preachers and there's a lot of pastors and there's a lot of prophets that'll scratch that itch in your ear. But listen to what God says. Listen to the healthy words of the Lord. Remember, we're going to read it in 1 Thessalonians. But before we read that, I want to read you something from the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 through 4. Look what it says about the last days. And look what he tells Timothy. He says this, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead and by his appearing in his kingdom. He's telling Timothy, Timothy, what I'm going to tell you, pay attention, because one day God is going to judge the whole world. Those who have passed away or those who are alive at the second appearing of the Lord Jesus, God is going to judge whether they already passed away or whether they're living at, when, at his return. He's going to judge them, Timothy. So make sure you pay attention to what I'm going to tell you. That's the same thing I want to say today. Pay attention to these verses because one day God is going to judge the living and the dead. So let's pay attention to what he's telling them. Verse 2, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. Now look why he tells them to reprove and rebuke and exhort with patience. He's telling them, listen to this. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with patience. Why does he need patience? Let's find out why he needs patience. For the time is coming when people will not endure. They won't want to hear it. They won't want to hear it. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. What is sound teaching? Sound doctrine. Healthy words of the Lord. The words that are going to help you grow spiritually. People aren't going to want to hear that. I heard a preacher a long time ago. He said this. He said one day that he had a Bible conference or a Bible service. And he said this Bible conference is going to be dedicated to breaking down the book of Matthew. Like that's what it, what it was going to be dedicated for. A service to break down the book of Matthew. And then about a month later, he had a service and he said this service it's going to be dedicated to speaking about the book of Revelation and the prophecies in the book of Revelation. And then he had another service. This service is going to be dedicated to spiritual warfare and demons and the devil and the spiritual realms of darkness. So he had three conferences. He had one of spiritual warfare, one of prophecy, and one of going through the book of Matthew. And this is what the preacher found out. He didn't do it on purpose, but this is what he found out. He said, when I made a service to go through the book of Matthew and just explain the book of Matthew compared to the one of spiritual warfare and the one of the book of Revelation. He said the one of the book of Revelation and spiritual warfare, those services were packed. But those same people that went to the spiritual warfare service and those same people that went to the book of Revelation service, the service that was just dedicated to breaking down the book of Matthew, it was empty. Hardly anybody went. What does that tell you? People have itching ears. People are just searching because of curiosities, not because they really want to learn. Do you know what's going to give people victory through those spiritual warfares? If they know the word of God. If they know the word of God. Because one of the weapons of our armor is the sword of the spirit. What's going to give you victory in spiritual warfare is when you read the word of God and practice the word of God. That's going to help you fight the spiritual warfare. Do you know what's going to have you ready? Do you know what's going to have you ready from the book of Revelation and all the prophecies that are going to happen in the book of Revelation? Do you know what's going to get you ready for that? <laughs> when you understand the word of God. So people see some things like boring and people see other things like, wow, that's really what I want to read. And that's why Paul tells Timothy, Timothy, 
you got to reprove and exhort and rebuke with patience. Because the time is coming when you're going to be preaching, Timothy, and people aren't going to want to hear it. People are going to not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate. You know what I think about when I hear the word accumulate? I think of like when I was little and I was at the beach and I was making a sand castle and I would grab the sand. You know, I would accumulate the sand. I would gather up the sand to make a pile of sand. That's literally what Paul is saying. He says they won't want to hear the sound teaching, but they will accumulate. They will gather for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. When people want to get rich, who do they go to? They go to a prophet talking about how you can get rich. When people are all interested in demonic warfare, spiritual warfare, who do they go to? They go to a man that's talking about only demons, only casting out demons. But when people want to grow in faith, what do they go after? Somebody who's teaching the word of God because the word of God is what's going to give you growth. When you are a doer of the word and not just a hearer of the word, that's when God's actually going to do something in your life. But the Bible says in the last days, people won't want to hear healthy teaching. People are going to accumulate for themselves profits after their own desires. I want to ask you something. Is your desire just to be finding out all the time about the next trendy Christian thing? Or is your desire to grow spiritually? Because if your desire is to grow spiritually, I want to tell you, fill yourself with the word of God. And don't just be a hearer, but be a doer. And he says, as for you, always be so reminded. Endure suffering. Do the work of an evangelist. And then he tells them this, fulfill your ministry. Fulfill your ministry. He didn't tell them, Timothy, you're going to fulfill your ministry when you find out everything about spiritual warfare. He didn't tell him, Timothy, you're going to find out your spiritual, you're going to fulfill your ministry when you find out everything about the book of Revelation. Mm -mm. He said, dedicate yourself to teaching sound doctrine and fulfill your ministry. Do you know how you're going to fulfill the work of God in your life? When you're a doer of the word and not just a hearer. And when you're not just accumulating for yourself teachers that are going to just tell you what you want to hear, but you're actually filling yourself up with the word of God. Now let's read the scripture that says, if you ignore this, you're not ignoring man, but you're ignoring God. Look what it says. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 1 through 7. Finally then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus, that as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God, just as you are so doing. He starts off with this. We already told you how you're supposed to be living. Did you know there's a way that we're supposed to be living? The Christian life isn't left to your interpretation or to my interpretation. There's a way that we should be living. The Bible says without holiness, no one will see the Lord. And that's what the author of 1 Thessalonians is telling the church. He's telling them, walk in the ways that we told you to walk in. And look what he tells them. He says, just as you have received from us how you ought to walk and to please God, there's a way that you can live that will please the Lord. Just as you are doing, that you do so more and more. Not only should we start living a holy life, a life that pleases the Lord, but the Bible says that we can do it more and more. In other words, the more you grow spiritually, the more you're going to understand and the more that you're going to continue to walk in holiness. And at one point, things that you didn't think were hindering your spiritual walk, the more you grow in the Lord, you're going to be like, man, I can't believe I didn't see this. This was hindering my walk all along. I can't believe I never saw this, but you're going to be able to grow more and more. And look what he continues to tell them. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus Christ. And here it comes. If you ignore this, you're not ignoring man, you're ignoring God. For this is the will of God. You can know the will of God. People are always asking, what's the will of God? Here it comes. Here's the will of God. For this is the will of God. Your sanctification, which literally means your holiness. What does the word holiness mean? It doesn't mean to be flawless. It means to be set apart. It means to be exclusive for the Lord. It means that you understand, I no longer live for myself, but the life that I now live, I live it for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who paid the price for me. A holy mindset is when somebody understands, I'm not living for my self-gratification. I'm not living for my carnal pleasures. I'm not living for my own sensualities. Oh, I'm going to go through battles. Oh, I'm going to go through temptations. But I'm not going to surrender to those things no more because I'm not living for those things no more. Now I'm living for the Lord. When you think like that, you are pleasing the Lord. When you live like that, you are in the will of God. Look what he continues to say. He says that you abstain, meaning reject. Don't go to it. Don't let it in. Refuse it. That you abstain 
from sexual immorality. That each one of you know how to control his body. He's talking about holiness. He's talking about not giving in to the pleasures of the world. That each of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor. This is the will of God. This is the will of God. That each one know how to control his own body in holiness and honor. Not in the passions of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. He's saying live differently than the people who don't know God. The people who don't know God, they just let themselves go in the passions of their own lust. But you're not like that. You should live in holiness. You should walk a life controlling yourself. And look what the Bible continues to say. That no one transgress and wrong his brother in this matter, because the Lord is an avenger in all these things, as we told you beforehand and solemnly warned you. And look what verse 7 says. For God has not called us for impurity, but for holiness. God has not called you for impurity. But for holiness, the grace of God will pick you back up. But the grace of God is not a hall pass. The grace of God will raise you up. The grace of God will forgive you. The grace of God will restore you. Oh, believe me, he'll restore you. But the grace of God is not a hall pass. And that's what the author of Thessalonians is saying. He's saying, for God has not called us for impurity, but for holiness to be set apart, to have that mindset of, I, I don't belong to the ways of the world. I don't belong to the carnal passions. I belong to God. Not for impurity, but for holiness. And here it is. This is the verse that says, if you ignore this, you're not ignoring us. You're ignoring God. Look what it says. This is not the teachings of a man. This is not the doctrines of a man. These are not my teachings. These are not my doctrines. These are the doctrines of the Lord. And look what verse 8 says. Therefore, Whoever disregards this, in other words, whoever rejects this, whoever ignores this, whoever doesn't pay attention to this. Therefore, whoever disregards this, disregards not man, but God. If you reject this, what we just read, that God has called you for holiness, for not, not impurity, that God has called you to learn how to control yourself. If you reject this, you're not rejecting me and you're not rejecting the Bible, you're rejecting God. Therefore, whoever disregards this, disregards not man, but God who gives his Holy Spirit to you. He's saying, the Holy Spirit wants to help you walk in holiness. But when you reject this, you're not rejecting us. You're rejecting the Holy Spirit. And if you reject the Holy Spirit, you're rejecting God. He's saying, if you reject these words that God has called you for holiness and not impurity, you're not rejecting a man. You're rejecting God. I want to let you know, we can know the will of God. The Bible told us there. The Bible says that the will of God is for us to walk in sanctification. In other words, in holiness, set apart for the Lord. You're not going to be perfect. You're not going to be flawless. You're going to make mistakes. But repent. Because when you repent, you're acknowledging that was a sin. That did not please the Lord. That is wrong. Lord, forgive me. And even when you repent, you're being holy. You know why? Because holiness doesn't mean you're flawless. Holiness means that you set apart yourself for the Lord. That you know you're exclusive for God. So even when you repent, you're being holy. Because you understand that doesn't honor the Lord. And you repent of it. And you ask God to forgive you of it. And you continue to walk forward with the Lord. And he will continue to wash you and continue to cleanse you. And you will grow in his sanctification more and more. The Bible lets us know that you're not going to stay the same way that God found you. God's going to build you up. The Bible says, he who started a good work in you is faithful to finish it. God started the work in you. Don't get distracted with living for impurity. Continue to walk in that sanctification. Continue to walk in that holy mindset that you're set apart, that you're exclusive for God, that you no longer live for your own carnal pleasures. Now you live for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Live in that mindset, and God will continue the good work that he started in you. And if you're failing the Lord... If you're living a life that doesn't please him, repent and ask him to forgive you. And the Bible tells us that he is faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And the Bible says, even though a righteous man falls seven times, seven times, the Lord will raise him back up. God wants to raise you up right now. All you need to do is repent of your sins, stand up spiritually speaking, and continue to go for it. Continue to trust God. Don't trust in your emotions. Trust in his word. And he's going to finish the good work that he started in you. I hope this video was a big blessing to your life. If it was, do me a favor. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. I post weekly videos that I hope and pray will be a great encouragement to your life. So do me a favor. Press the subscribe button and turn on those notifications so that you can be alerted every time I post a brand new video. 
Every time you subscribe, you're helping this channel continue to reach more and more people. And also, if you want to show your appreciation for this channel or for this video, you can do so by a feature at the bottom of the screen called Super Thanks. Those are a great blessing to my life. Those are always greatly appreciated. And if you want to show your appreciation on a monthly basis, check out the link in my description. It's called Channel Memberships. Channel memberships have exclusive offers, and that's also a way that on a monthly basis, you can continue to show your appreciation. And before you click off, do me a favor, watch one of these videos. I hope and I pray that they will be a great blessing to your life. God bless you.